608 yards of total offense, first American Athletic Conference victory. Coach, an opening statement, please. I think first and foremost, um, I think the kids played for those names in the back of those jerseys. And uh, this was an emotional week uh, for our family, um, but for our kids, they really embraced the ch this Children's Harbor game. I think we storytelled throughout the week the importance uh, of it, the opportunity for them to spread some joy to some families that are going through one of the tougher things any parent can go through. Uh, in fact, my, pre my halftime speech wasn't very long, wasn't very good, and after I finished it, then players came in and said, hey, don't forget, we're playing for the names on the back of those jerseys. So that's what I'm most proud of. Uh, we had a good week of preparation. We prepare well. You should play well. It's the first time that's happened for us. Uh, obviously, offense was uh, just flowing, but the defense just rock really stood out, even though you gave up 35 points, 400 yards, but just the effort and the timeliness of what they were able to do. Just talk about that defensive effort. Yeah, this was more of defensive. I mean, I, like, I hate doing that. And special teams won offense, won a defense, won. I mean, I, I was in locker rooms that got divided because of that. But this thing started because defensively, after the one long touchdown, they bounced back and got the ball back. You know, they turned them over. <laughs> Uh, they got the offense field position. Obviously, did a good job, obviously, of finishing off those drives, but that doesn't happen if the defense doesn't um, not flinch after the first year and uh, get all the stops and get the ball in, in Jacob in the offense's hand. You talked last week that, uh, about thinking going in a game you could run the football. Did you, did you think the same thing going in, into this game? Yeah. Um, and we want to be balanced. I think I spent enough time with you. I don't, in fact, what were the attempts? They're always skewed in games like this, but um, 48. Rushing. Yeah. But I think at one point we were playing close to 50-50 uh, run pass. And, and when you can do that, you're obviously going to have a lot more success. But yeah, we have, we have to do a better job controlling the game with the run game. Uh, I thought we did that tonight. I think our backs ran really well. I got on the phones a couple series in, I said, let's not forget who the best players in the field are right now. They're number one and number 29. So let's make sure we give them the ball as much as possible. Obviously, with the uh, running game working that well, I ask the same, same question. You know, what does those jet sweeps in rounds, uh, the receivers getting them out in space on the edge, uh, what does that do for the running game, uh, you know, as, as the game wears on? It helps. I mean, it creates lateral movement. And if they're moving laterally, there's less vertical movement. It's easier to run the ball versus lateral movement. I mean, it's kind of a... That's why we do what we do offensively. If we can throw the ball, get the ball on the sideline, uh, run the jet sweeps, make them play sideline to sideline, uh, we're gonna have more success running the ball between the tackles. So uh, it's a lot to defend when we execute well. Tonight was you know better in terms of execution standpoint. But I mean, my my notebook, Danny, can you come give it to me? Um, I'll go see your mommy. Go see your mommy. Um, I think when you uh, when you keep teams off balance, you're obviously going to have a better chance of dictating terms to the run game. So we got to continue to do that. Uh, oh, what I was saying was, you know, we still made a ton of mistakes. I mean, I had I had twelve. Um, you know, everybody asked me why I wear these pins, and the negatives are red. You know, and I had twelve uh, critical errors in red at halftime. So we're still not as close as we, as good as we're going to be, but tonight we're better. Coach Jacob Zeno, four touchdowns a pick, over 350 yards passing. Uh, what was your assessment of his performance tonight, and how has he continued to grow as your starting quarterback throughout the year? Yeah, he did some really nice things. Now, I'm 75 of that, and one completion, one touchdown to a run. Just happened to go in front of him. Um, I said, all you did was hit a guy in a face mask. Like, let's not even get too proud of that. Um, but no, he, he's, you know, big, some huge conversion down, showed a lot of poise. You know, those weren't rhythmical throws, a couple of them for touchdowns, that he had to kind of sit sit back there, be patient, and let things unfold. I had another really good week of preparation. Um, so the challenge, you know, I challenge him each week was something, one more thing to add to his process and one more layer to get good at. So uh, this week he'll go to work on becoming a better player like he did last week. Coach, back here, up here. Uh, so obviously you come into this week wanting to win, but with everything on your heart and on this team's heart, with Children's Harbor, it's a beautiful thing when you get the dominant win and you get to do it for something so special. So what did that mean to you just to have this win and obviously you're with your family as well? Well, not a ton um, because, like I said, Monday, you know, I, I can put myself in these family's shoes and uh, to have some joy 
um, for it's actually great. It's four and a half hours. So that was only like three hours and fifteen minutes. But to have four and a half hours of joy in the midst of a lot of pain right now in their lives is, is an awesome thing. And you know, I told that's what I told the kids before the game was it's you know those families aren't going to know if they missed a tackle or missed an assignment. They are going to notice if they have great energy, if they're great teammates, if they have fun, if they have smiles on their face, if they're playing for one another, and, and that's what it looked like out there. I mean, even after that first touchdown, you know, it's disappointment not getting the onside kick, and then you give up the long touchdown, and I, I made sure I turned around. I looked at everybody. Nobody was down in the dumps. People had energy. They hadn't flinched. And what I thought to myself was, I'm a, if I'm one of those families looking down with my child's name on the back of your jersey, or our last name on the back of your jersey, I'm proud of that. You know, I'm proud of a bunch of kids didn't flinch. And um, I was, it, was, it was a cool moment for me to see that. And I mean, honestly, down seven, nothing, I'm telling myself, like, there's going to be 200 plays in this game. That's just one of them. You know, let's just make sure we win more than we lose. How big was that sequence early in the game? You get, you get another early in the game moment, but with, when the defense stopped them on that second drive, you, you know, you think you get an interception, then you almost get another interception, and you're thinking like, you know, you almost feel like your stake bit a little bit there, and then you get an interception on the third, you know, the yeah. next play. You're what right. What makes that sequence? I mean, what would you pile that on top of starting the game with an onside kick and thinking you have it, right, and then not getting it, and then getting a touchdown, then those that sequence of dropped interception, dropped interception, interception, and, um, you know, I think, how does it feel? Feels like everything's felt this year. You know, like you just gotta let it roll off your back. Like you can't, you can't react to it too much because we're still a team that's growing, and there, there's gonna be these um, these wild up and downs. And you gotta make sure that you're training the building, not just the players, but you're training the building um, to. That's just one play. Now invest everything you have in the next play. And when we can start doing that you know, again and again and again in 15, 20, 25, 30, 60 plays in a row, we'll be champions. Right now, I just want to do two in a row, and I don't want to do three in a row. I want to do four in a row, and that was a good example of, okay, dropped interception, no big deal. I'm on the headset saying, hey, guys, it's going to be incomplete. I promise you it's going to be incomplete. I saw the ball hit the ground. Get ready for the next call. Boom, next call, D-back has a chance to intercept it. It's dropped. Hey, let's have the best third down call right now. Like, let's not worry about the past. And I think college kids and a lot of coaches are this way. They're so consumed with what just happened that they cheat the opportunity to be the best in the next play. And I'm trying to train this building that it doesn't matter what just happened. It's the next play. It has to be the most important play of your life. The next thing has to be the most important thing in your life. Long winded answer, but that's kind of the theory behind it. And that's how it feels. Like, I'm just trying to teach all the time. Coach, we talk about the emotions behind this game and meaning behind this game, also getting your first conference win. What do you hope your players take away from this game? I hope more than anything else, because Tuesday is going to suck, and I hope they're like, good. Like, it sucked last Tuesday and we got better. You know, embrace the suck, embrace the, embrace the work, embrace the preparation. We're not even close, not even, we're light years from where we're going to be. But it starts Tuesday. Um, embracing the hard things and getting better, you know, and I hopefully they have affirmation that when they do that, good things happen on Saturdays. Saturdays, it, when football is played, it's its highest level. And if you go talk to Bill Belichick or Bill Parcells or whoever it is that you think's the best of all time, you win games on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. You don't win them on Saturday and Sunday. You know, you really at the at highest level, you win them during the week. And I hope that's they realize that. We have a chance to go out Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday have the best practices of our lives and give us a great opportunity to win on Saturday. Talked about the defense and uh, having that mentality, uh, you know, for getting last bag of the next one. Just how much that comes from uh, Keandre Swoops on the field, uh, you know, a guy who gets that third, gets that third uh, try at the interception, mm -hmm. gets a fumble recovery, and really, uh, you know, gets this defense going or there early. Yeah, he, you know, he. He owns some mistakes last week. I thought he took a really good leadership role this week by just owning some stuff. And uh, he was one of the guys that had a really good week of practice. You know, he didn't sulk. He didn't think about the bad stuff that happened last Saturday. And I uh, thought he had, a, you know, got better. Like, because you're, listen, they ain't old men now. You know, you're talking about college football. They have a, I don't care how many snaps you play in college football, they can get a lot better. 
And that's one of my, one of my messages to Fish and Swoops and these guys that you guys have seen forever play. They got to get a lot better. And I think Swoops finally listened. He's got to become a better football player. And he did. He had a good week of practice and he got better. Um, so we, we got, I mean, whether you're 17 years old or 23, uh, not, nobody in that building, myself included, is good enough yet. So uh, we all got to get better, and, and Swoops did this week, and it showed up on Saturday. Last one. With, with Skull tonight, how, how big was the, this night for him? You know, he's, he had the injury in, in, in spring, and he's kind of been fighting his way through, and maybe doesn't have the numbers that people thought he might yeah. have at this point. How big was a night like this for him? I think it was big. I think it was affirmation, again, of hard work. Uh, we rested him Tuesday, Wednesday a little bit. Um, so that he could have, you know, fresher legs and feel better. Um, so I think it's important that he saw some progress because his attitude's been awesome, you know, regardless of what his numbers are. He's a team first guy. Uh, and we need to establish him more as a runner. You know, he's been more of the kind of hybrid to this point in the offense, and, and we need to establish him as the dot back, and, and we definitely established him as the dot back tonight. All right, that's all right, thanks, you guys. Thank you.